parametric constraint is a label on a point that has a value and then that value can be either modified in the template dialog box or through the roadway designer. Here I've got the aggregate base course component shown here. And we're just going to take a look at the different points that we have within this component. For the uh, center line of the ABC, I don't have any constraints currently defined, but as I step through these different points, uh, the next one is going to be the bottom of the ABC. And what I want to do is label it. So this is the parametric constraint label. And I want to give it a, a unique name here. I want to call it base depth and then just hit the tab key to get out and then hit apply and go to the next point. And what I'm doing here is labeling each one of these constraints to have a parametric label to it. Uh, the one I'm going to do here, I'm on the uh, right side now. So this one's going to be right underscore travel way space slope. And on the horizontal, it'll be right underscore travel way and width. I'm going to hit apply on those and hit next. And then on the vertical, again I want to use the same label as I used on the center line. And once I've typed in a label, I can actually pick it from the drop down. And you can see here base depth is already being able to be selected here from the drop down. So I want to make sure that those are the same now. I'm going to hit apply and move on to the next one. So now I'm on the left hand side over here and I want to follow the same naming convention so it'll be left underscore travel way slope and then left travel way and width and hit apply and next last point is going to be again the vertical base depth from the drop down here and hit apply. So what I've done now is I now have a parametric constraint on all of these points in this component. And what's nice now is if I go to my active template and look at the parametric constraints, and if I go to my base depth, remember all three of these points you can see are highlighted, so each one of these points is being defined by base depth. I can do a right-click edit and then edit that, so maybe instead of 0.83 I just want it to be 0.5, hit OK, and all three points move so I'm going to set that back to um, 0.83 and show you what happens when you actually pull these things together and you use the same label for all the base course, the sub base, and the pavement. You can pull them all together and here if I take a look at the active template and the parametric constraints, again I can see here the left travel way slope left. I can set that up to be instead of a 2%, I can make that uh, 3% and hit OK. And you can see how all three components are in sync because they're all using the same component name. Same thing with the travel way left width. If I wanted to edit that and instead of 14 feet go to 12 feet and hit OK, all of them will slide in. So using the same naming convention, the same label, all these components will work in unison. Now I want to open up my roadway designer and show you how you can use parametric constraints with your roadway designer. What I've got here is my uh, roadway template and what I want to do is be able to go from station to station and actually do a widening. I'm going to go to Tools, Parametric Constraints and in Parametric Constraints what I can use is those constraint labels and if I want to modify the travel ways, if I want to modify the right travel way width, I can define the start value and the stop value. So at station 1200 to station 1300, I want to start at 14 and end at 16 and hit add. And then from station 1300 to 1500, I want to keep it at 16 feet wide. And then we'll narrow it back down to where it was. So we will start at 15 and go to 16 and go back to 14. So we're just doing a, a simple widening here between those stations. So I'm going to hit uh, close on that and then process all of these. 
and take a look at it. So I'm just going to go to station 1100, 1150, and at 12 we're going to start widening here. So you can see here at 1250 and 1300 I've actually worked my way out for an offset of 16. And then continuing down to station 15 and then from 15 to 16 I'm going to start bringing it back in here. So we'll bring an offset of 15 at 1550 and then back at 16 we're back at a 14 foot offset. So we're using parametric constraint with roadway designer to work through um, different transitions in your templates. This concludes our tip with working with parametric constraints in inroads. For more tips and tutorials, please visit our website envisioncat.com. Thanks for watching.